Hello, members of the Film Society. My name is Clay Davis. I'm the Film Awards Editor at Variety. Thank you very much for joining me today for this conversation with the co-writer and director of the film, The Father, Mr. Florian Seller. How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you. Good to see you. It's always uh, good, interesting uh, seeing anyone that is on camera, on Zoom for the last 12 months. It's been crazy. <laughs> um, ha, ha, first of all, um, I hope everything's safe uh, where you are. And uh, congratulations on a fantastic movie. Uh, fantastic film with amazing performances. Uh, and your very first movie. Not, not everyone gets a home run their first time at bat. How, how does that feel for you? I mean, it's a, it's a great joy, I would say. Of course, it's such a, spe a special year, you know, to have your first movie to be released. But um, no, it's a, it's a great joy. I mean, the whole process was very joyful. To have this opportunity to work with such amazing actors was to me, you know, the greatest gift. And uh, where did you find these up and coming actors, Anthony Hopkins and Olivia Coleman, who have never done anything before, yeah. you know, before this? Where did you find them? Yeah, I have to say that, you know, when I started working on the script, uh, basically the father was first to play. And I started to, to think about adapting my play into a script. And um, I'm French, as you can hear, and I'm in Paris now. Uh, but uh, despite the fact that I'm French, when I started to write the, the script, I was thinking of Anthony Hopkins as, you know, the greatest uh, for that part, you know. I, ha I had this conviction and this powerful desire to work with him because to me, he's like a legend. For a lot of people, he's a legend. And, and for that film in particular, I, I, I really believe that it would be so intense you know, because we know him through all his roles, you know, as this man, very intelligent, always in control of the situation. And I thought that it would be so disturbing, challenging and exciting to see that man precisely losing the control. So I started to write the script with him in mind. And that's the reason why the main character's name is Anthony. And it, it was a dream. And I was aware that it's not an easy dream to fulfill, you know, because I'm not crazy, because I know that he is Sir Anthony Hopkins and it was yeah. my feature film. But... You know, I had that desire and, you know, until someone comes and proves you that it is not possible, it means that potentially it is. So I just try to follow my instinct and I send the script to, to his agent. And one day I receive a call of someone letting me know that he wanted to meet with me. So I took a plane to Los Angeles to have a breakfast with him. And uh, this is how it started. Oh, wow. The good old days when we used to be able to have breakfast together. Remember that? <laughs> Those days were good. Yeah. Um, that, that that's amazing the fact I mean the fact that this dream became a became a reality for you um let's go back to you know adapting your own play when when did you even where did you get the inspiration to think of this uh subject matter uh to write a play that was going to be performed and then later become a film so let's the father is about a, a man losing his bearings and uh at the very beginning of the process when I wrote the play I guess it was something personal I wanted to, to share or to tell because I have been raised by my grandmother and she was so important to me. She was like my mother and I was living with her and she started to suffer from dementia when I was 15. So I was really with her during those years. And so I knew a bit what it was to go through this painful process. But I also knew that I, wasn't, um, that I was not the only one, meaning that everyone has a grandmother or everyone has a father and everyone has... Um, or we'll have this um, painful dilemma, you know, or that fear, you know, and, and this is what drew me to that subject, you know, the fact that we are all connected with those emotions. And, um, and when it was done on stage, first in France, and then in many countries, everywhere, the response was the same. And uh, despite the different, the cultural differences, you know, between the countries, meaning that the, the, the audience was waiting for us after performances, just to share their own story, to tell their own story. And I realized that there was something cathartic about it. And I think that this is when I made the decision to make that film because, you know, it, it, it was the opportunity to just to share those emotions and to remember that we are all in the same boat, you know, that we are all, you know, the same, with the same emotions, the same fears. And there is a consolation, I think, a real one and a beautiful one in a way, just to remember that, uh, you know, we are, 
in the same boat. You know, we are not alone in front of this kind of issues. Absolutely, and and, and I think the play, um, the play subject matter, and then now becoming a feature film, uh, especially with the year we just had, is everyone's pretty. I don't say. Let me not say everyone. Let me rephrase. A lot of people are becoming aware of their own mortality, and that our time here on this earth is very—it's finite. You, you know, and the memories we have and losing them, we are put in the mind of Anthony, Anthony the person, and then you know, obviously with Anthony Hopkins' performance, could you have ever imagined that we would be in this situation globally? That we would be able to, you know, find new meaning in this film that maybe we wouldn't have in any other time in history. No, it was not possible to imagine such a situation. But it's true that the film it's about being alone, alone, being isolated, being isolated in a single apartment, and uh, that the challenging times that we are going through are very challenging as you said, because we, we have to, to face our own mortality. And in a way, it was the challenge of that film. Um, and especially the challenge that Anthony had to, to go through, you know, because I didn't came to him to do what he's known for. It, he was not asked to do, again, something uh, that- You want to do Hannibal Lecter losing his mind or anything like that? You weren't feeling that kind of moment uh, from him? I think it was useful for us because the film starts almost like a thriller, you know, we follow him and we, I use what we know from him. But still, the, the film had to, to lead to somewhere else. And the challenge for him was to explore a, a new emotional territory and a way to let it go and to accept to go to that place, which is a painful place, but also a beautiful place. And to explore those, uh, you know, very secret uh, emotions that he had in, in himself. And the thing is that Anthony, he's not a method actor, you know, he's not like a, an actor who needs to talk and talk, talk about his character. And it's not about creating a character. It, what, what I was hoping for is for him just to be in front of the camera uh, as if there was nothing fictional, you know, just to be and then to, to use his own emotions, meaning his own feeling of mortality. And, you know, this is what he did. And sometimes it was painful as a process, you know, and he, that's why I think he's really brave and he, he did such a, a great job as an artist, you know, putting himself at risk, doing something that is not easy and that I'm so grateful to, to him that he, he had that courage to do so. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And, and I, I, was, I can't wait to get to the fun part of these conversations and that's the actual filmmaking process. Uh, and what I love so much about the film is the production design, the cinematography, the editing, in particular, those three parts, because the apartment is a character, the way the camera moves with the characters as, you know, when Anthony is uh, explaining something or, or talking, uh, the usage of colors, uh, were those things in your play when, when uh, cause you didn't direct your plays, but did, were, was that written into the plays uh, in terms of like the set work and the set design, or was that something you thought of now for the cinema? No, this is something that came with the adaptation because what I took, what I kept from the play was to tell the story from the inside, you know, and to put the audience in this unique position as if they were going through a labyrinth, as if they were experiencing what it could mean to lose your bearings, you know, in the narrative, in the situations, in the characters, there are so many contradictions, you know, you're like, I, I don't understand, or I am the only one who do not understand, so that you have to be in an active position, trying to figure it out. This is something that was really important to me, to, to ask the audience to be part of the narrative. But what I didn't want to do is to film a play, you know, and this is what I, it, it, it was very exciting to me to try to think about how to go to the cinema and to do what the cinema can do, what only the cinema can do. And as you said, it was, mainly through uh, the set design, for example. It was a, an opportunity for me to try to find a visual way to ask the audience to experience this disorientation. And for example, so I, I draw the layout of the apartment when I wrote the script from the very beginning, because it was part of the narrative, you know, and 
and, and so you are in this place, in this apartment. This is Anthony's apartment. There is no doubt about it. You recognize the space and the knickknacks and the pieces of furniture. This is Anthony's space. And step by step, scene after scene, always in the background, of course, you are connected with the characters, but in the background, you have some small changes, so small metamorphoses on set. And you're not supposed to, to be aware of that, you know? You just feel that something has changed, you know? Sometimes is piece, some pieces of the furniture that had disappeared, sometimes is the colors, the proportions, so that you recognize the place, you know where you are, but at the same time, you are starting to doubt about what is real and where you are. And so you are experiencing the, this labyrinth, you know, and this is what I wanted for the audience. Yeah, and uh, you described my feeling ex perfectly because I did notice those little changes and then it would, and I, I'm just someone who gets really anxious normally, like just under the weird circumstances. So I'm watching the movie and I'm, I'm seeing I'm like so, something's off and like it yeah. just, it, it, the movie just maneuvers that way. Um, can, can you talk about Olivia Coleman's character in particular? Because uh, she... And I always, I always say when I first thought I was very mad at you because seeing Olivia Coleman cry on screen, it sounds as she is, I get upset. If she's upset on screen, because she's such a, a great human besides an actress. <laughs> but um, she is a, she is probably the most disconnected character from the audience in terms of, because we doubt if she's real or what she's actually feeling. And if there's like, there's obviously a checkered layer layered past that isn't, exactly said, but you know what's there. Can you talk about how you two came up with uh, getting her to the point that she did for filming? Yeah, the, the beginning of everything is the fact that I really admire her. I mean, I really adore her as an actress. I, I think she's the greatest actress in the UK. I mean, it, if it means anything. And uh, I think for her to work with Anthony was really something uh, special, you know, um to be his daughter and she's so generous humble you know there is no ego issue with her it's very easy to work with someone like that because she's absolutely dedicated to to the story to something larger than herself i mean she's she's really uh, amazing to work with and what happened is that they they connected so well together you know uh she was just witnessing uh, Anthony's emotions. And because it was not the character, it was Anthony for real in a way, she was immediately so moved. So she cried, I'm sorry. But on the other hand, for us, it was really like witnessing miracle, miracles every day. Uh, it, it was really uh, something special to, to, to see that. And, uh, but what is funny about her is that as soon as you say cut, you know, at the second she's somewhere else, you know, she's not crying anymore. She's just very fun. And, popped and, out of it. <laughs> yeah. So it's it, she is so talented that she can do that. I mean, she's not staying in the character or in the emotions. And and probably that's the reason why she's capable to to explore such deep emotions because she, she doesn't stay too long there. And uh, but she's very generous. And what what was great for the film for us to 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 have this opportunity to work with her is that you know when you see her, you love her. And, uh, and for that film, it was important because it's not only about, you know, most of the time when you, when you tell a story, you have to decide what is your perspective and, uh, and you have to, uh, to have only one perspective. This is rules uh, for screenplay writing. And I, did, I decided not to, to follow those rules because it is at the same time, it's Anthony's perspective and we are in his, in his brain in a way. But also I wanted to tell a story at the same time, from her perspective, you know, when you are becoming the parent of your own parent and when you are in this so strange position, because it's a painful situation and there is no obvious answer, you know, you don't know what is right, what is wrong. Uh, you're just lost because it, it is painful. She's trying to do her best. She, she keeps her father to her home. But uh, the moment comes when you know she doesn't know if it's still fair or if she if she if she's allowed to to live her own life or not. I mean, so there is no judgment. And Olivia, she's she's not as an actress. She's not someone who is just trying to make you understand what you are supposed to feel of to uh, 
or to think about something. And what I didn't want to do is to have, a, in a way, an opinion. I wanted the audience to have a, an opinion about th that situation, you know? And um, because everyone, you know, comes to a film with his own emotions, his own personal story, his own uh, sensibility. And I think it's important to leave a room for, for everyone to, you know, to, to, to bring the answers. Yeah. And, and I think the film is just here for questions. Hmm. Interesting. That's that's very uh, interesting perspective uh, with Becca. I think we do we do come with a lot of questions. We lo we leave with most answers, and I, I think that's okay. I, I always I'm always an advocate. You don't need to spell everything out for me in a movie. I can walk out and have my own dilemma with it. But I have to ask you because it's always one of my favorite facts about this film, and I have to let you talk about it. The final scene with Anthony Hopkins. And Olivia Williams, another great Olivia, by the way. Yeah. Uh, you got all the great Olivias just working with you. Um, that final scene was one take, correct? No. <laughs> no, it wasn't. How many I, takes was it? I because you don't rehearse before before yeah. the movie, right? Yeah, I made a decision not to rehearse because because I wanted to be as far as possible from the theatrical process, but also because I wanted I wanted the actors to be themselves in a way, and not to create anything that, you know, because the temptation, you are talking about a film about an old man, the illness, and, and, and it would be, tempt I mean, I didn't want to pretend to be ill, to pretend to be what it is not, you know, and to, to have something a bit fake, uh, like a real performance, but a bit fake. I wanted something more simple, raw, and true. And, and, and so I thought that if we rehearsed too much, we will start to bring, uh, to build things uh, that would be not absolutely true. So we didn't rehearse before we shot, every day before every scene we, re we rehearsed, of course, but it was fresh, a uh, fresher, you know? And, uh, and um, but that scene, uh, we knew that it was the most important scene of the film because if it was not there, the whole film would be almost pointless in a way. So we knew, and, and it was the moment when Anthony had to, to go to that place, you know, and to connect, to, to be connected to something he was not, he was not aware of in a way. And um, so at the beginning, it was quite hard because for him, it was painful and, and, I, and I wanted more. Uh, and so he, he had the feeling that I was asking something painful. Uh, and, and so he, he asked for more time and he went to his uh, room to take, time a bit and then he told me what happened and I think it's a it's a beautiful thing he came back on set and he saw on the table uh, some uh, glasses you know that made me that made him seem think sorry that made him think of his father's uh, glasses and suddenly he traveled into his past and he remember a lullaby that uh, his mother was singing to him when he was a child and I saw him you know, live, becoming the child he was, traveling into their memories. And that song destroyed him, absolutely. And he was connected to his own and personal emotions about, you know, a boy who needs his mother to save him. And it was exactly what it was about. You know, it was Anthony crying for his mother. And I think that's how this beautiful emotion overwhelmed us. Sorry, my answer is so long. <laughs> no, no, that's really good. Because first of all, this is a, a good lesson that we all learn. Don't believe everything you read on Twitter and the internet. Because that, that's what's kind of been like straddling around there, saying that like that final scene with Anthony uh, was done like in one take, or that was like the first or the first take. So that was, I'm really glad you cleared that up because now we have the, the real fact out there. But no matter what, first take or not, it's still the pivotal moment of the film that, uh, really, I would say that's that's I would say that's the wrecking ball hitting the building and d like because you're already so unstable at that moment as a as a viewer, seeing everything just you know you're still disoriented you're like trying to figure it out like I I remember thinking at one point I was like Olivia Coleman's dead this is Sixth Sense <laughs> you know she <laughs> she's Bruce Willis like what is this and then it all comes to that moment and then you realize you get is connects the dots 
what is the difference? I guess, what is the big change from the play to the film in terms of the ending? Is the ending the same? Yes, but it was, the film is really more immersive as an experience. Yeah. And, and I think that it was more challenging intellectually to try to understand because, you know, you can focus on more specific details. So what I wanted for the audience, as I said, is to play with all the pieces of the puzzle to make it work. But it never works entirely on purpose so that you, you're trying, you're trying. And the moment comes when you have to accept that you can understand everything. And, and uh, when you do so, when you let it go in a way, you can understand the whole story on an, another level, a more emotional level. And strangely, when you do so, you understand everything. Of course, there is still a doubt about who is this character and mm -hmm. that scene, was it real or not? But at this point, it doesn't matter anymore. It was just to lead to another place, a place you can absolutely understand with your heart and a more like a very simple, simple place. Uh, of course, the journey, the narrative is complex, but I didn't want the film just to be a mind game. You know, I wanted the film to really take us to that very simple place, which is the fact that we are all children in a way, uh, you know, with this memory of our mother that could save us. Did you, I, I know you said you were, you were inspired a lot by, you know, the story of your grandmother uh, getting, uh, suffering from memory loss during the filming process. I mean, I would say, I mean, I'm sure you had it at some point before, but during the filming process, did you really get a sense of your own mortality, I guess, and I guess where you'll be at Anthony Hopkins age, like, did you start imagining your own future? Cause that's what I think I struggled a lot with. I started thinking about what am I going to be like at 80 years old? You know, like what, like what would I want for myself? You know, you start asking like those very tough questions that everyone hates to talk about. Yeah. I, I went through this kind of questions, but you could, you could, you could be like, what's the point? You know, you have time, but the thing is to me, just to, to be connected to those feelings, it's not about, I mean, it's, it's just to, to realize that we are alive and, uh, and that it matters. And well, of course it, it's challenging, of course it's painful sometimes, but still we are here with ability to live our life and it matters. What I wanted the audience after that film is not to be sad, is just to behind the sadness, to remember that we are all together and we are alive and it matters and we have to enjoy it as as possible got it all right uh one i have one last kind of big question for you uh it's kind of a two-parter what is the hardest thing that you filmed on set like what was the hardest scene for you to film but also as this is your first movie and you have said publicly at least to me and variety that this will not be your last movie. You have kind of fallen in love with the cinematic world now. What was the scene that you did film that you, that was probably the one that clicked and you're like, I'm in now for f becoming a director moving forward? Was there, uh, and that could actually be the same scene, but the hardest scene you filmed and then the scene that made you really fall in love with cinema as a director in the process? Um. I would say that it's the last scene we just mentioned because it was the, the most challenging one, but when it appeared, it was like a miracle. And I was so grateful. And I think everyone on set was aware that something special happened. And this joy, this collective joy was something very special to me. I think it was the most beautiful moment almost of my life. And, uh, and also, you know, because Anthony, just after the cut of the scene, he was crying. And I was crying as well. And he took me in my arm, in his arms. And we, we stay a bit like that. We were both grateful. And it was, I mean, it, it, was, it was very simple and it makes sense a lot to me. So I, I think that it was the, um, yeah, one of the most beautiful moments of my life. I mean, it has to be, unfortunately for your first movie, you've chosen two of the best actors ever. So now for your second movie, 
you have to go get Jesus himself from heaven, <laughs> ask him if he wants to come to do a movie because what you, what you, the magic that all of you create here is is truly extraordinary and uh, and I, I I sometimes I just can't believe I sometimes I think you're punking me that I I can't believe this is your first movie like that is one of the most profound truths here and it's one of the best debuts of a filmmaker that I've seen in quite some time and I really and I really mean that I don't say that to just anyone I will. Okay. I will, I will usually dodge that pretty quick. <laughs> um, but no, th thank you very much for taking the time with me today, Florian Zeller. Um, thank you to Sony Classics for giving us the father uh, and, and everyone that that's, has seen the movie, tell all your friends to watch it. And to everyone at the Film Society, I'm Clayton Davis again with Variety from Wards Editor. Thank you for this, for sitting with us for this conversation and uh, be safe. Thank you so much. Thank you.